Good evening. I'm uh, Noel Latif, President of the Foreign Policy Association, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this very timely conference that is co-sponsored by the Foreign Policy Association and the Korean Institute for National Unification. Our topic is current challenges and prospects for unification on the Korean Peninsula. We have two outstanding panels. The first moderated by David Denoon, Professor of Politics and Economics at New York University and a director of the Foreign Policy Association. David does an amazing job of chairing our Great Decisions Editorial Advisory Board. The second panel will be moderated by Earl Carr, Jr., Managing Director of Momentum Advisor. I will let the moderators introduce their panels, but before I step down, I would like to invite the outstanding Council General, Consul General, Consul General of the Republic of Korea in New York, Ambassador Gi Won Kim, to make some opening remarks. Ambassador Kim. Thank you, Noel. This is really, really a great pleasure uh, to uh, make a joint event uh, together. Uh, with your leadership, really, really, I am uh, very delighted and contribute to your cause and also to my government uh, purposes. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Korean Consul General. On behalf of uh, my government, uh, I thank a Foreign Policy Association and Korea Institute for National Unification for hosting a very timely conference today on the future of Korean Peninsula. Currently, uh, North Korea is talk of the town, not only in the, uh, Washington DC, but also New York and all over. And North Korea seems to pose a high uh, geopolitical risks in the middle of escalating bellicose remarks and rhetorics. Some people talk a possibility of war some others say they are only words and rhetorics. South Koreans are a bit hardened uh, at these provocative rhetorics by North Korean leaders for decades. A sea of fire in Seoul is a typical threat of Father Kim Jong-il and current leader Kim Jong-un. This is a threat for decades. North Korean geopolitical risk has been ongoing and known already. So already known risk is no longer a risk. So it is, no, it, is, it is no great surprise to see a Korean stock market, KOSPI, is renew, renewing historically high levels every day. Credit rating agencies, Moody's and Fitch, continue to give Korea best rating with stable outlook. They still consider North Korea risk already known and assess positively South Korea's economic fundamentals and their resilience. North Korean threat is containable with consistent collaboration among allies and like-minded countries. Korea, United States, Japan, and international community is very firm on pressing North Korea hard so that it give up nuclear weapons sooner than later. Early November, uh, in two weeks' time, President uh, Trump will be visiting Asia, including Korea, Japan, and China for the first time. He is reciprocating President Moon's visits to Washington, D.C. in late June and to New York in September by making a uh, state visit to Korea on uh, November 7th. They will discuss North Korea Alliance, FTA, and partnership issues. I look forward to greater, even greater collaboration evolving among Korea, United States, and Japan, and China. North Korea and the United States are in full agreement that diplomatic options be pursued thoroughly in order to avoid any miscalculation of war on the Korean Peninsula. Korea-US alliance is ironclad deterring any provocations from North Korea and safeguarding peace, stability, and prosperity in the region. It is paradoxical that when we envisage concrete military options, 
concrete military options, we are bound to see stronger and more opportunities for diplomatic breakthroughs. United States has been engaging China and Russia to join implementing sanctions and pressing North Korea further for denuclearization. Currently, the most important sanctions to be added on North Korea would be whether and how much oil supplies, oil supplies could be reduced or cut off from China or Russia. It is an issue how China or Russia cooperate, implement, or strengthen sanctions on North Korea. The most recent UN Security Council Resolution 2375 and the bilateral sanctions of secondary boycott by United States would be beginning painful, painful sanctions being imposed on North Korea. It's not reached the level of the sanction against Iran yet. The, the, the Korean government pursues sanction and dialogue at the same time, unless North Korea responds seriously to the call of dialogue and denuclearization. The sanctions will get harder and harder. North Korea will dry up and die gradually beside nuclear weapons without a, being able to use them. Next year, Korea will host uh, 2018 Winter Olympic Games at Pyeongchang. The Winter Games uh, will be first of a series of Olympic Games to be held in Northeast Asia. Pyeongchang in 2018, Tokyo in 2020, and Beijing 2022. We are aspiring for these Olympics to become successful and bring opportunities promoting peace, stability, cooperation in North, Northeast Asia. North Korean figure skating pair qualified for Olympics. When they decide to compete at Pyeongchang, it will contribute, it will contribute to improving inter-Korean communications and peace Olympics. In closing, I thank APA President Dr. Noel Latif uh, for preparing this timely conference and look forward to uh, fruitful discussion. Thank you.